Local life could be so much better if we could actually use e-bikes, and regular bikes of course, to actually get around safely for our daily living. Micromobility pathways for feet, bicycles, scooters, and e-bikes are one of the reasons so many European cities and towns are frankly way more enjoyable to visit and to live in than many American suburbs and big cities. A few locations here in America are catching on, but progress is still really slow. Micromobility solutions like e-bikes are much better suited for many local tasks and errands than oversized and over over-engineered cars are. Do you really need to drive a 3,000 pound vehicle to drive across town to pick up a one pound burrito? Absolutely not. How often are we driving around in our big vehicles by ourselves, not picking up any cargo? 40% of trips are single occupant. The average monthly expenses for a single car are now around $1,000 per month. This includes the car payment, insurance, fuel, and maintenance. Not to mention all the time wasted sitting in traffic. That's $12,000 yearly just to drive around. A high-end e-bike costs about one-sixth that yearly car expense amount, and charging an e-bike costs pennies. A network of car-free biking and e-biking pathways across America in our suburbs, towns, and cities could save us individuals thousands of dollars monthly and yearly, and it could save our municipalities millions of dollars. In Europe, many cities and towns blend biking pathways into their overall transportation design patterns seamlessly, creating a haven for e-bike riders, bikers, and walkers alike. European cities tend to be far less car dependent than our American cities and suburbs. Here in the United States, we've been very, very slow to build alternatives and move away from car exclusive infrastructure. Let's explore what daily life riding e-bikes could actually look like. Share our experiences riding the Aventon Adventure 2 e-bikes in various American settings, rural, urban, and suburban, and address the ethical concerns around lithium ion battery production. Let's begin by taking a look at some European cities that have successfully integrated a huge biking culture alongside car infrastructure in their downtowns and city cores. Places like Amsterdam, Copenhagen, and Utrecht have shown us how bikes can be such an amazing complement to other forms of transportation in both the city center and leaving the city center. In Amsterdam, about 40% of all trips are taken by bike. Over 60% of the residents bike daily. There are actually more bikes than people in this city. 32% of all traffic movement is by bike compared to 22% of traffic movement, which is by car. Both models of biking infrastructure and car infrastructure can coexist. In these European cities, dedicated pathways set apart from automobile roads enable bikers and walkers to have a safe transportational experience. Today, we're here at the Atlanta Beltline, which is a prime example of car-free infrastructure to allow you to use e-bikes to really do your day-to-day -day shopping, commute to work, live within biking distance, or live on the Beltline itself. This car-free pathway has encouraged so much amazing development, like the apartments, the shops, the restaurants, all because it's a quieter way to get around. E-bikes can thrive on car-free pathways like the Atlanta Beltline. To truly unlock the potential of e-bikes in daily life, we have to have car-free pathways. Why you ask? Well, safety is paramount. Cars are the biggest threat to cyclists and walkers. Here in the United States, almost 7,000 bikers and walkers are killed every year by cars. These are not pedestrian accidents. These are not cyclist accidents. These are car crashes killing walkers and bikers. Over 100,000 bikers and walkers are injured every year in crashes involving cars. Cars used to represent freedom here in America. Now increasingly, cars represent a undesired requirement, a financial burden that is growing bigger and bigger just to get to your job and a physical danger to many of us. Old folks ask, why don't kids play outside anymore? Cars took over. The typical new suburban home is built on a zero lot with no yard to play in. Four lane highways abound all over the place. Sidewalks beside roads are very dangerous. And the bike lanes that they install around here are an absolute joke. A solution is car-free pathways. Let's get the cars outside of city centers and build pathways that are for bicycles, e-bikes, and feet. Car-free pathways provide a protected environment for micro-mobility users and walkers. Some people here in America are concerned about weather while riding an e-bike. 
cold weather or wet weather. Our peers in Europe show us that it's totally possible. They simply dress appropriately. Let's restore a wee bit of that American pioneering spirit so we can handle a bit of wet weather on a bicycle. Cars still have their place, but it's for more rural transport, going from rural areas to the middle and edge of suburban areas, but not going through the city center core anymore where congestion occurs. Now, let's delve into the multitude of benefits that e-bikes bring to daily living. First, personal cost savings. Choosing an e-bike for your daily short trips or commuting can save you a bundle on maintenance, fuel, insurance, car payments, and even parking fees. And it's not just individuals who benefit. Cities and municipalities can save billions by reducing the need for road work, car infrastructure, parking lots, and all the other associated costs. Our county alone is $1 billion behind in road work, and we're one out of 3,000 plus counties in the United States. Suburban car culture is truly a house of cards that cannot sustain financially. The real treasure to protect using an e-bike is your health. Regular biking and e-biking can reduce stress, increase your physical activity, and give you a healthier lifestyle while getting around. I enjoy riding an e-bike more than driving my car just for the fresh air and the scenery of the trees around me alone. Moreover, e-bikes foster a sense of community and reduce congestion, making our cities more livable and increasing social cohesion. Perhaps the most significant benefit is the environmental benefit of the e-bike. By reducing our dependence on cars, we drastically cut emissions and expenses and reduce pollution. Now, let's take a moment to address the ethical concerns around lithium ion batteries. It's the cobalt, which all lithium batteries require. The mineral cobalt is commonly used in computers, cell phones, jet engines on planes, magnetic applications, diamond cutting tools, and many other electronic devices and computing technology. Around 70% of the cobalt is actually mined in one country, the Democratic Republic of Congo, according to the UN. Within the DRC, there are many documented cases of poor working conditions, child labor, and other forms of abuse. The smaller artisan cobalt mines are often unregulated. This is where the poor working conditions and the child labor often occurs. These issues must be tackled for any product using cobalt. If cobalt comes from these locations, the practices around extracting that cobalt have to be fixed, not just for EV batteries and e-bike batteries. Any application of cobalt is fueling those practices if the companies are not being responsible in how it's sourced. If you use a computer, a phone, or take flights on planes, you're supporting the cobalt industry, so this is something we all should care about. The Aventon Adventure e-bike battery stores 678 watts of power. Tesla EVs store about 80,000 to 100,000 watt hours. It takes 100 to 150 times the battery capacity to move a car EV like a Tesla compared to a e-bike. The ethical problems around cobalt extraction absolutely need to be solved. E-bikes use a tiny fraction of the batteries required to power a full-size EV like a Tesla. Therefore, e-bikes are using a fraction of the cobalt of a bigger, more wasteful vehicle. This reduces the consumption of cobalt as we push to make the mining process far more safe and responsible with better regulations. We'll be charging our Aventon Adventure 2 e-bikes using our solar panel system at our micro cabin and our tiny house. We're we're literally riding around on sun power. With a battery capacity of 678 watt hours, it will take two of our 350 watt solar panels charging on full sunlight for about one hour to give our e-bike a full battery capacity, giving us a range of about 30 to 60 miles of travel time. With dedicated car-free bike paths, it's a really enjoyable, affordable, and sustainable way to get around. In conclusion, envisioning a life of local micro-mobility with e-bikes is not only a beautiful vision, it's absolutely possible with a little political will and getting creative building car-free infrastructure at a local level.